Thank you so much, Frank. The federal government announcing the fall economic update yesterday, which includes a proposal to send extra child benefit payments to families in the new year and more funding to help businesses and workers make it through the winter. Plus, some promising news when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine front. Uh, when could we see it here in Canada, though? That's the big question. Let's break it all down now. Anita Anand, Minister of Public Services and Procurement, joins me now this morning. Good morning to you, Minister. Good morning. How are you? I love the energy. First thing in the morning. Thank you so much That's for that. Right. Uh, let's begin first with the money. Uh, looking at you know, $381 billion deficit, that sounds like a lot. So let's digest all of this and why uh, your government says you know, it's important that we do invest right now. Well, listen, we are still in the middle of the pandemic. As you know, and we all know, the second wave is upon us. And our government believes that we need to continue to stick with Canadians and support Canadians right through to the other side. So this fall economic statement represents that effort. It puts money for the children, $1,200 um, on the table for families, student loans, uh, long-term care, wage subsidy is going back up to 75% uh, this year. So what we're seeing is an across-the-board attempt to make sure that families and Canadians right across this country can make it through to the other side. As we look at the second wave, thank you for bringing up long-term care. We have seen some gaps, uh, definitely through the first wave, when it comes to long-term care in nursing homes across the country. How much of a priority is it for your government right now? Well, you'll recall in the throne speech, we did make a commitment to long-term care. It is a priority for our government to work with the provinces and territories to make sure that long-term care facilities are supported, that they have the PPE they need, and that the elderly don't bear the brunt of this pandemic as they have for some time. We need to make sure that we're supporting all sectors of our economy and our society, especially those that are hardest hit. And certainly we have seen seen the elderly bear much of the brunt. And I have my own father who's 89, and I can speak from experience as well that this is very tough on our elderly, and our government wants to be there for them as well. Indeed. Uh, let's talk a little bit about vaccines. In fact, that's all anyone wants to talk about right now is this rollout. <laughs> we heard from Premier Doug Ford saying, listen, I need answers from the federal government. When are we going to get this distributed in Ontario? What's the plan? Is there a plan right now? There most definitely is a plan, and I just want to be clear that we have the most diverse portfolio of vaccines of any country in the world and the most number of doses per capita of any country. At the same time, we have to remember that Health Canada, as a regulator, must approve this vaccine to make sure it's safe and effective before it is distributed out to Canadians. Once Health Canada approval is forthcoming, that vaccine is going to roll out across this country. We are expecting deliveries of 6 million vaccines in the first quarter of 2021. And we are in touch with our suppliers every single day to make sure that the delivery schedules are tight and that they are going to be on time with the deliveries once Health Canada has told us that this vaccine is safe. Minister, do you have any idea about logistics on rollout? I know it, it should be one step at a time. Obviously, the approvals through Health Canada, but the questions being, how is this going to not be a bit of a debacle when we actually roll this out? Because everyone, no, I shouldn't say everyone, but a lot of people will want to get this vaccine. So how's that even going to work? I want Canadians to know that there is definitely logistics being put in place. There was a claim yesterday that we didn't have enough freezers. On the contrary, we have procured freezers and we have enough deep freezer capability and freezer capability to store 33.5 million vaccines in total. So I want Canadians to be clear that these logistics are in place. We are communicating with the provinces to make sure they're ready to receive the vaccines as soon as they come into this country. This is my sole responsibility and goal, and we are going to get there together. Uh, given that different vaccine candidates have uh, different storage temperatures, you mentioned the freezers, and some are a two-dose versus a one-dose. Are we looking at all of those factors and then planning accordingly, dependent on which of these companies comes through? 
Most definitely. You are correct that there are different needs for each vaccine. We are, of course, taking this into account, working closely with the Public Health Agency of Canada, as well as my counterpart, uh, Minister Sajan, to make sure that the armed forces are there and ready. You'll recall that Danny Fortin has come on board, uh, General Fortin, vast experience in logistics capabilities and deployment of this vaccine. So we are going to get there together, no question. The plans are in place and we are going to roll out this vaccine for Canadians. Okay, Minister Anand, this is uh, hopefully the good news that everyone is looking for. Thank you for taking the time to ch chat with us this morning. Thank you so much, Mel. Take care. Take care. Have a great day.